Star Citizen have revealed the Tumbrel Storm, a new concept vehicle. We're going to be talking about that. It's on sale. It's already in production. But we're also going to be going over a little bit of the RSI Lynx Rover as well that's now available in-game. Cloud Imperium have said there will be more reasons to use ground vehicles in Star Citizen in the future. There's going to be dangerous weather and environmental hazards that will prevent or discourage ship flight in certain areas and encourage ground vehicle usage. Ground vehicles add depth to missions and exploration and gameplay opportunities. The Tumbrel Storm is a concept tank and was revealed as part of the 2023 Fleet Week event. It is a light tank, a scout tank, an assault tank. It's one of them, or all of them. A small but powerful single operator tank that can operate relatively quickly and solo to flank or take out enemy positions or otherwise threaten an area ahead of a main battle line or while you're waiting for reinforcements. It has a size 3 twin barreled energy autocannon that's exclusive to the storm controlled by that single operator. It's an unstoppable force of nature. Blitz overcrowded battlefields and wipe out enemy artillery. The original Storm solo tank was a revelation back in 2606, turning the tides of countless conflicts in the Second Tavaran War. Now in 2953, Tumbrel Land Systems is revolutionizing battlefield dominance and harnessing the forces of the unstoppable Squall once more. Faster, stronger, and more impactful than ever, the reimagined Storm is a true force of of nature. Now obviously, it's not reimagined for us, that's just in law. It's new. It's entirely new for us. The cutting edge turret mounted energy autocannon decimates much larger targets in a complete overhaul of the original Storm's offensive package. Uncharacteristically agile, the Storm's proprietary track system and heavy duty power plant let it close in with speed that will leave the enemy dumbstruck. In the cockpit of a storm, you're a force of nature. Intuitive, ultra-responsive controls feel like riding the wind, not piloting a tank. It's designed to support the sort of Nova tank in attacks and can take on most other ground vehicles pretty well. The Nova does have the advantage of it in combat because, well, it's a multi-crew three-seater tank, which has a size 5 cannon, versus the Storm, which has that sort of size 3 proprietary or exclusive weapon. However, if you have three storms versus a Nova, that's a very different fight. And although sort of Clan Imperium are saying, yes, it's supposed to support Novas in attacks, and it would probably suit that role very well, it's going to be great in just operating solo. It's going to be great in just, you know, you're fighting some people in Urza Rovers or Lynxes or in Tumble Cyclones or whatever, and you've got one of these, this is going to do very well. So it's actually surprisingly small. It's 10.5 meters long, 7.5 wide and 3.6 high and because it's gone through grey box already we know it's going to stick relatively close to that if not exactly. It has a slew of single size zero components so size zero being vehicle sized components the smallest that Clan Imperium um, offer for vehicles and it also has two size one fuel tanks so size one is effectively normally the smallest class of ship components but it's larger than size zero components at first glance it appears to have no shield generator however delving deeper into the media on the tank it says a dedicated shield generator and emitter are included along with tactical spec armor that keeps the storm safe in the most harrowing situations so that shield generator does appear to be size zero as well CIG wanted to have a tank that looked a bit unique and not really like the Nova, but also took inspiration from the Cyclone. It's tracked as a vehicle, but it's also built to be fast. It sort of like has those four kind of track sections, and it looks quite like the Halo Scorpion, at least a little bit in my opinion. I mean, obviously, it's not identical, but there's certainly some influences there, right? You do have some external storage for like weapons and gear on the tank, so I mean, if you want some FPS weapons there. Um, you also have component access on the exterior of the tank as well towards the rear. Going into the operator seat is apparently going to feel like being in a mech, so it's sort of like um, you are absorbed and eaten by the vehicle almost. So Clan Imperium have been working on various things that they've improved from the Nova and learnt from ground vehicles to get the sort of physics and getting these sort of tanks fitting in vehicles better, moving around on the ground better, that sort of stuff. So 
when are we going to have the storm? Well, it's in production already. They've already finished Grey Box. They're doing various detail passes. They're sort of getting the tracks to deform better with the ground at the moment. It will be in game in the not too distant future. I'm hoping by the end of this year, but we don't know. We don't have any hard times or dates on that. Price wise, it's available on the RSI website at the moment from $70 for war bond that comes with lifetime insurance or $80 um, for 120 months insurance if you want to use store credit. The loaner for the storm is the Nova tank and the Aurora MR. As I said, it is a concept at the moment, so it's not in game yet. We don't know when it's going to be in game. And after it is released a game, about three months after that, it will be available to purchase in in game shops as well for Alpha UEC. Um, also, I suppose at its size, it's actually going to be able to fit in a lot of ships. It's quite sh like low to the ground. Hopefully it tucks nicely into a Mercury Star Runner. It's definitely something I've wanted in game. A single seater sort of assault tank really makes sense. We've got the Tumble Nova heavy tank. We've sort of got like the Spartan APC. And now we've got that um, other vehicle that I really wanted in the lineup, which is a, a lighter assault tank. I'm really interested to know what you think about that Tumbrel Storm. Are you going to be getting one in game? Are you not really interested in ground vehicles until they have more to do in game? Or do you prefer something like the Tumbrel Nova even though it takes more crew to run? Or is it all about ships for you? Now, there is another thing I want to talk about. The RSI Lynx. That's now drivable in game. It's the luxury, more aesthetically better looking counterpart to the Urza Rover. And it's paired with the Constellation Phoenix. So yes, you get one of these with a Constellation Phoenix. Whether you're an old owner of one, whether you're a new owner of a Phoenix, you, you get one of these. And the Emerald as well comes with a Lynx Rover. When compared to the Urza Rover, which is very, very similar to this, it's more focused on VIP transport and exploration, being fun and fancy. They had to make it fit in the Connie, basically. They had to make it to pretty much the same metrics as the Urza Rover. So it's got impressive tires, it's got big rear windows, it's got TVs that pop out in the back and spinning chairs and a storage area, a big fridge and weapons rack. So it can only take four people total, so two in the front and two in the back, but those two in the back are going to be uh, in the laps of luxury. I believe the Urza Rover can take sort of six because it's more of a uh, personnel transport. The Lynx is faster though and more agile than the Ursa, but is less armoured. Other than that, it's just pretty similar to the Ursa Rover, just with a higher, sort of smoother uh, top speed. So vital statistics wise, yeah, it is a bit a bit bigger, a bit taller than the Urza. It's 7.75 meters long, 5.7 meters wide, and 3.15 high. Speed-wise, around 30 meters a second, which is um, compared to the Urza's 29, so very similar speeds, slightly faster. Uh, we have two size one weapons uh, as well on it. So the Urza Rover has two size one Bulldog laser repeaters, whereas the Lynx has um, two um, M3A laser cannons, which are operated by the co-pilot again. Unlike the Urza though, it has no cargo grid, although there's going to be room for you to have uh, sort of weapons internally. There's little storage areas, little cupboards and things. Um, it has all single size zero components. It does also have a shield generator. Rugged adventure meets high-end luxury in the Lynx. Traverse any corner of the verse with the confidence that you'll be traveling in comfort and style. The cabin provides unimpeded views of the Lynx's surroundings via extra large windows, reinforced so that your tours aren't interrupted by errant debris or projectiles. You never know where your adventure may lead or what may be waiting over the next ridge, but you can rest easy in a fully enclosed ultra safe cabin. With the Lynx, you can take the adventure anywhere, designed to fit perfectly in the Constellation Phoenix. The Rover's compact frame also accommodates transport in a wide variety of larger ships. Or something else I do want to mention, there is sort of component access internally in the passenger section, which is very useful if you want to repair or switch out anything. Um, so the Lynx um, Warbond is available from $55. That does come with lifetime insurance. And you also have it available as store credit for $60. That compares to the Urza currently being available from $50. It's not available to buy in game yet, though, that links. You can buy it on the RSI website, but you won't be able to buy it with Alpha UEC yet. I believe that will come in 3.20 um, or just after. Um, you do get a Aurora MR as a loaner ship in case the Lynx was your only vehicle as well. So if you purchase that, you get a, an Aurora MR to use as well. In regards to customization for the Lynx as well, Cloud Imperium did say you would have the ability to change wheels and suspension um, in the future. They're not obviously going to have that as part of the initial release now, but in the future, you will be able to do that. 
I think that Lynx looks very cool, but it's not something that I would personally want to own or use very much. I'm much more practical and utilitarian. I either want something that's going to do a task like the Rock or it's going to be good in combat like the Storm. VIP transport is not top of my list, but maybe it is the top of yours. Maybe you like the aesthetic and you want to um, drive other people around in it like a taxi as part of like a VIP gameplay that you might have with the, the Phoenix or to role play with your org. And I'm really interested to know if it is something that you like or dislike or just aren't interested at all. Are you a Phoenix or Emerald owner that's been like, yes, I'm we're getting one of these now, awesome. Or is it a sort of vehicle that you would see going, I know those guys have got money so I can extort money from them. Sort of like a little pirate stream. Anyway, that's the Tumble Storm and the RSI Lynx. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please tell me what you think of those two vehicles in the comments below. And if you're going to be purchasing them yourself, if you enjoyed uh, looking at them at uh, Fleet Week, or if you purchased anything else during Fleet Week or you're looking forward to more, were you expecting more releases and more sort of um, ships and stuff? Maybe we will get more because Fleet Week is not over until the 30th of May. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. You take care and I'll see you in the verse. Give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day, but give him a NordVPN subscription using nordvpn.com slash boardgamer or the links below and he'll browse the internet more safely and with greater accessibility for a lifetime, or at least until his subscription ends. He can then shop for his own fish from places like Tesco's, Walmart or Asda or something. It also makes a fantastic gift. Next time you go to a dinner party or a wedding, bring them a NordVPN subscription. Bam! You'll be the talk of the town and it's certainly better than bringing a fish. Please remember to like and subscribe, and if you'd like to go further to support the channel, then use that join button under my videos or the Patreon links below. That would be amazing. It goes a long way to helping Zin and I be able to create daily videos, and you'll get some exclusive perks, including some videos, posts, and polls to help guide the channel. Every month we have a ship giveaway. For May, it's for an Origin 400i, the luxury exploration touring ship capable of taking three crew to distant stars. It also comes with lifetime insurance and a Star Citizen game package. To be in for a chance of winning that, just comment on any of my videos made during the month. More details down below. Thanks very much for watching. I hope to see you in the verse.